Hello everybody. Good morning. This is Garden Jen and uh, today we're going to do an update on the garden. Um, I know it's only been a couple of weeks, few weeks, but a lot can happen in a few weeks as many of you gardeners know. And if some that are just starting, it's good to know that a lot can happen in a couple of weeks. That way you know what to expect. So let's take a walk today. All right, over here is my rose bed that I've been working on. I have some new roses in here. Um, in front here, this little guy, um, that's a climbing yellow rose. Um, I can't remember the exact name. My name tag's gone out of there. But um, that's new. Um, uh, and then right next to it is a cat mint plant that we've left in here. And then i got another rose here. This is a Chicago Peace Rose, and I had this in my greenhouse for a little bit to make sure it had a good start before I put it out here, because we've had some temperatures that have been um, just wonky. So anyways, this one's doing really well. I just transplanted that today. Again, this is a Chicago Peace. It's kind of a peachy kind of color. Really beautiful looking. At least that's what the picture says anyway. And then, I have an established rose over there. I don't remember what it is, and I don't remember the color. Um, I'll have to, you know, wait till it blooms. And then I have another one right here. I'm still waiting for it to really start shooting out some shoots. This is a um, bicolored rose. It's kind of a pinkish with a yellow um, line, uh, outline on, on the leaves. It's really cool, but nothing yet's really happening on this one. It's still kind of dormant. I've seen a couple shoots, but nothing much yet. And then I just put this one in over here. This is called Blue Boy. Um, some um, other places that you get it have a different name, like Blue Moon, uh, things like that. But this is uh, um, going to be a pretty one here, too. And then we're going to have one more that's going to go in right about here, I think is where I was going to put it. Um, it's a Neil Diamond Rose. It's a yellow and, uh, not yellow, red and white variegated. It's going to be really, really gorgeous when it gets going. So that's the rose garden that I got going on. Then I'll take you over here. We're still cleaning out the garden from uh, all the stuff we piled here, so don't worry about it. It'll get cleaned up. But, um, and this just fell. All right, we have our lemon balm plant coming back, which is really, really gorgeous. I'm looking very excited to see that. And this is my stinging nettle. Um, I don't have uh, rivers around here or anything, um, wetlands. So I grow it, and I grow it in a container because this is a very uh, evas invasive plant. Um, it'll take over your garden. And you have to be careful with the stinging nettle. There's a reason it has its name. See if I can get a good picture. I might not be able to on the camera. But, um, see, nope, it's not gonna zoom in. On the leaves and on the stems are little tiny barbs. And those barbs contain a toxin that causes your skin to, to burn, to sting. That's its uh, um, defense mechanism. So in order to use, or to, uh, take care of that you have to wear gloves and things, but what I use it for for medicinal purposes You can even eat it like a lettuce once you cook it or once you dry it that stinging um, uh, Toxins taken care of so you don't have to worry about it anymore. It's a very good plant to have This here is a valerian uh, Some of you may know this is what's used to help um, with um, sleep and anxiety It's gotten really really big and this is only a month since it started coming out of its dormancy, so that's a really, really good sign. Over here is a lavender, and I was worried about this for a little while. It was still quite dead looking, but uh, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. If you can see, I've got a lot of new growth on that now. Like I said, a lot can happen in just a couple weeks. And then right next to it, I have white whorehound. Still don't have any lemongrass growing yet, but we'll keep watching. And that's some chives. And I already harvested some chives. I split them up um, for, for uh, selling um, with our landscaping company. 
and then over here growing like crazy is yarrow and hopefully we'll get some nice beautiful uh, blossoms from it this year because this is a second year old plant and since it's growing right out of the ground in the spring it should get big enough to have some beautiful flowers I don't remember if I got the white colored or the yellow colored we'll have to wait and see in the season okay another thing I wanted to show you guys who've been following me um, these are all my winter sown jugs um, if you don't know what I'm talking about you might want to go back a couple videos um, but basically I planted my um, veggies, my herbs, my flowers, all in these containers. Um, I used mostly milk jugs. I do have some other containers that I've used. Um, you plant them in the soil and then, um, you know, in the, in the container in the soil, tape them up and then just set them out here over the winter. And then in the spring, when it's time for them to sprout like they would in nature if, if the seeds had dropped from the plant, um, they'll start growing. Some of you guys have wondered how this works, and well today I'm going to do some reveals to show you how well this does work. So um, we're going to look at my turnip plants. That is how well that works. I've got too many turnips in here right now. I'm going to have to, I'm actually going to be planting these so I have them opened up so they can get acclimated to the to the air blowing on them and things because they've been closed up in the greenhouse. They're acclimated to the temperatures and all that, but to uh, um, actually get them acclimated to the air and the, the actual ambient temperatures around, you have to open them up. So there's one. There's another. And then this one, it's not quite as big yet, but they're getting there. And then there's another one. And then also, um, I have some kale that I'm going to be transplanting as well. That's kale. Isn't that gorgeous? So, so that's, that's what this does. It gives them a good start. And then um, you open them up a day or two before you want to plant them just so they can get acclimated. Especially if it's going to be real warm. We've had real warm days and you don't want to just take them out of the greenhouse and then just plant them. You'll shock them too much. So we're letting those get acclimated and then we're going to plant them. I think probably in this bed over here um, is where I'm going to be planting most of my stuff um, that I have that's ready to plant. And then um, I'm going to be planting my snow peas um, and beans here. Um, for some reason, I'm not sure why, I've only gotten a couple beans and things that have sprouted using the, the jug method. And it's probably operator error. I mean, this method does work for many, many people for growing everything. So the fact that I don't have some things just means that either my seeds weren't viable or I might have messed up along the way. So, but I do have backups. Um, I'll show you some other um, plants I got going on here. All right, this one amazed me. This is a wax bean. I know it says spaghetti squash, but it also says wax bean. So this is how I know that beans can be winter sown. Can you see in there? Those are huge. Um, these are wax beans, the yellow beans. And I didn't know that they actually have heirloom wax beans. I thought wax beans were a hybrid. And so I wasn't sure I was gonna actually have wax beans this year, because I'm trying to do all natural all original plants, no hybrids. Um, you know, the, that way I have the original things that God created as much as possible for for um, my eating things. Now for flowers and things, um, some hybrids are beautiful. Um, so I'll use a couple here and there. Um, but one of the biggest things is I wanna be able to save seed. And with hybrids, you generally can't save seeds because they're, um, they won't be true. You go to plant the seed next year and you'll end up with a completely different plant. So I try to stay away from hybrids for that reason as well. So um, let's see, I'm trying to see what else I have over here going on that I can show you. I have a lot of things that are growing. Here's some bachelor buttons. Let's see in there, those are bachelor button flowers. And they're about time to get transplanted into their um, selling pots um, so I can um, pot everything up for the landscaping sale. But anyways, I just wanted to show you what we're doing out here. Here's my rhubarb. It's gotten really, really, really large. 
and um, this has only been again in just a couple of weeks so excited about that and then over here of course is my strawberry bed and this lavender um, I haven't pulled it yet but as you can see there's no new growth like the other lavender I had back there so that's what's going on here I hope you guys are having a wonderful time gardening um, if not get out there start gardening get your hands dirty it's a beautiful thing this is Garden Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Bye-bye now.